Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Umma Radio. You are listening to the Tafsir class with myself Abu Musab. All right, so we are still busy with the kitab known as Tafsir Ibn Kathir or the rather the Mukhtasar, the abridged version of uh, of Tafsir Ibn Kathir written by Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah. We are still busy with the Tafsir of Surah Baqarah and last time we had stopped on page 64 of this particular print of the kitab at the end of ayah number 50. So tonight inshallah we move on to the next three ayat which is ayah 51, 52 and 53. Okay, let's just, without further ado let's begin. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. so so the first ayah starts Allah continues still with the discussion that we we were dealing with and Allah says وإذ بعدنا موسى أربعين ليلة ثم اتخذتم العجل من بعده وأنتم ظالمون ثم عفونا عنكم من بعد ذلك لعلكم تشكرون وإذ آتينا موسى الكتاب والفرقان لعلكم تهتدون Starting out with ayah number 51, Allah is speaking still again, reminding Bani, as you would remember, we were dealing with Bani Israel. So Allah says, وَإِذْ وَعَدْنَا And also, remember, when we had made a point, an appointment with Musa alayhi salam to take place after 40 nights. ثُمَّ اتَّخَذْتُمُ الْعِجْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَنْتُمْ ظَالِمُونَ And then, just after that, when Musa alayhi salam had left for that appointment, then you took that calf after him and you started worshipping it وَأَنْتُمْ ظَالِمُونَ and you were wronged was you are oppressed when you were doing that into the next ayah Allah says ثُمَّ عَفَوْنَ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ and then after that we forgave you لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so that perhaps you may be thankful and in the next ayah Allah says وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْدِرُونَ and also remember when Allah had given Musa alayhi salam the kitab which was the Torah and والفرقان which is the criterion لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْدِرُونَ so that you may be guided now coming to the tafsir of these three ayat we start as you see he brings back here he says يَقُولُ تَعَالَى وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكُمْ he says that Allah Ta'ala is saying remember my favors upon you because if you remember a few ayat back we started يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ from that ayah Allah was telling Bani Israel remember my favors upon you the favor when I saved you from Bani from Fir'aun the favor when I said when I did this and I did that and all of this and then these are more favors which Allah is mentioning here now in these three ayat so Allah Ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember my favors upon you. فِي عَفْوِي عَنْكُمْ In my forgiveness for you. لَمَّا عَبَدْتُمُ الْعِجْلَ بَعْدَ ذَهَابِ مُوسَى لِمِيقَاتِ رَبِّهِ عِنْدَ انْقِضَاءِ عَمَدِ الْمُوَاعَدَى Remember my forgiveness for you when you had worshipped the calf after Musa alayhi salam had left to meet his Lord after the appointed and promised time had ended. وَكَانَتْ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا And this promised time was 40 days. وَهِيَ الْمَذْكُورَةُ فِي الْأَعْرَافِ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى This is also mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf in the ayah where Allah says وَوَاعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلًا وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ That we had made an appointment with Musa alayhi salam to take place after 13 nights. وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ And we completed it by adding an additional 10. Meaning after 40 nights. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ بَعَدَ خَلَاصِهِمْ مِنْ فِرَعُونَ وَإِنْجَائِهِمْ مِنَ الْبَحْرِ And this took place after they had been saved from Fir'aun and they were after being freed from Fir'aun and being saved from the sea. You know there is Allah speaks a lot in the Quran about the Jews, their ingratitude, their evil, their kufr, their oppression and everything else that they had done. But amongst the worst crimes or rather I should say what shows the utter ingratitude. Okay, that I will come later on but it's the incident which takes place in this one year and there's another incident as well where you know it's like you cannot comprehend the amount of ingrained evil and kufr that was in the Jews. If you look at this here, Allah, had, Jews had been suffering for years under Fir'aun. Allah had saved them not only from Fir'aun and then they came to the sea and Allah split the sea which itself was the miracle, as you can say, of miracles to see the entire sea split open and the Bani Israel passed through safely and Fir'aun and his entire massive army entered into the water and Allah 
literacy close and every single last one of them is killed you know if you see something like this your mind is supposed to open but what happened after this had taken place Allah had now t- told Musa alayhi salam after 40 nights you must come to the mountain and Allah will now speak to Musa alayhi salam and, and everything of that sort so 40 as you say 40 days a mere 40 days a month and 10 days later Musa alayhi salam leaves the town and he goes off to the mountain and what happens in that short period of the, okay during these 40 days Jibreel alayhi salam used to come and visit Musa alayhi salam and okay we, it's a long tafsir as we will come into the various ayat of how the calf was made and all these sort of stuff like this where Jibreel alayhi salam used to walk they used to be left behind like some sort of jelly type of thing on the on the ground as you will see in the various tafsir but in any case then Samiri had gathered these things put it in the calf and then the calf had become soft but we'll get to all those tafsir later but what I'm trying to say is that this was mere 40 days and then Musa alayhi salam left to go speak to Allah and 40 days later you were just now freed from Fir'aun you were saved from the sea and everything of the sort here and Allah had given you a new life and everything of the sort and straight away you, re- you disbelieve in Allah and you start worshipping a cow you know in fact even prior to this the, the other ayah which I am referring to which will come very much later but it's when Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel just cross over the river, I mean, uh, cross the sea. And they come out on the other side and they see a group of mushrikeen worshipping idols. You know, you know, this ayah is, as you can say, the ayah which puts the Jews in the worst light possible. They had just now, now, now been saved. They see the first mushrik, they come along and he's worshipping idols and they ask Musa, alayhi salam, that... Uh, make also for us idols like how they have idols you know it's mind-boggling how the Jews Bani Israel are the Jews so okay just on that point of uh, Bani Israel and, and the Jews the uh, okay we can come to that again at the later stage but in any case is that they had just now seen all these miracles and the help and the assistance and everything Allah had given them and immediately they, the first thought that comes to mind is we must do shirk not we must thank Allah rather it's the thought which came to their mind was let us commit some shirk now let us have some idols and the minute these 40 days were passed by Samiri came up with a calf and they started worshipping it so idol worship is actually something which started from the Jews this deep rooted kufr which comes from them and anyway we come to the we'll come to the stories inshallah as we go along anyway moving further he says وَقَوْلُ تَعَالَى وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ يَعْنِ التَّوْرَةِ now he's moving actually to the, to the tafsir of these three ayat he says and also one of the favors Allah had given to them is وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ when we had given Musa alayhi salam the kitab يَعْنِ التَّوْرَةِ meaning the Torah والفرقان وهو ما يفرق بين الحق والباطل والهدى والضلالة. This فرقان means the criterion. It is that which differentiates between the truth and falsehood. What differentiates between guidance and misguidance. لعلكم تهتدون so that you may be guided. So that you may be guided. وكان ذلك أيضا بعد خروجه من البحر كما دل عليه سياق الكلام في سورة الأعراف ولقوله تعالى ولقد آتينا موسى الكتاب من بعد ما أهلكنا القرون الأولى. He says, and this, Musa alayhi salam was given the Torah and the Furqan. This took place also after being freed from Fir'aun and crossing the sea and everything of the sort. And he says, like how the, the, the how it's mentioned in Surah A'raf, when Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ And indeed we had given Musa alayhi salam the kitab, which is the, the Torah, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَهْلَكْنَا الْقُرُونَ الْأُولَى After we had destroyed the previous nations, which was the nation and the superpower of the time was Fir'aun. So after the destruction of Fir'aun, that is when Allah Ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salam the Torah. So what he is just giving you is the, the timeline of events basically. So very little uh, tafsir he gives on this point over here. He's just because obviously it's uh, very straightforward the this particular point over here. So he moves on now to ayah number fifty-four. And this is where the big portion of tafsir comes in. 
So he says that Allah Ta'ala says in ayah number 54, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمُ الْعِجِلْ فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِئِكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ It's still the same story which is continuing on. But now this is the after event. This is when Musa alayhi salam had returned to the to his people. But it's still this year is also one of the favors which Allah had given to them. So anyway, this ayah Allah says, "Wa idqala." And remember also the my favor upon you when Musa alayhi salam said to his people, "O oh my people, inna kum zalam tum anfusukum." In most definitely, you have wronged your own selves. Bittikhadi kum alajil by taking this calf. To worship it, فتوبوا إلى بارئكم. So repent to your Creator. فقتلوا أنفسكم and kill yourselves. Now what does kill yourselves mean? You will come to it in the tafsir. ذلك خير لكم عند بارئكم فتاب عليكم. إنه هو التواب الرحيم. And he says ذلك خير لكم. That is better for you عند بارئكم in the sight of your Creator. فتاب عليكم and then he forgave you he accepted your repentance إنه هو التواب الرحيم indeed he is the most forgiving and the most merciful question over here who are we who is being addressed here are we still in the story of Musa عليه السلام yes we are still dealing with Musa عليه السلام and بني إسرائيل and yes this indeed is why the surah is called سورة البقرة no no not not for this point here The Surah Al-Baqarah is called Baqarah because of another story which is when they were commanded to antazbahu Baqarah. When, okay, that comes to another story, but uh, the story in short is when a person was killed in Bani Israel and nobody knew who had killed him. So they asked Musa alayhi salam like to ask Allah that to show who was the killer. So Musa alayhi salam asked Allah and Allah Instructed Musa alayhi salam to tell Bani Israel and tazbahu baqara. Allah gives the command that you should slaughter a cow. And then it was like, what color must the cow be? How old must the cow be? And all these sort of things. Where if they had taken the first cow that came along and slaughtered it, it would have been fine. But the nature of the Jew is such that this and that and all that sort of stuff. But anyway. After eventually slaughtering the cow, Allah had given the command that they must slaughter the cow and then touch the dead person with a portion of this dead and uh, this cow which has been slaughtered, and then the truth shall be revealed. So anyway, after slaughtering the cow, they had touched this dead person with a portion of this animal. This of I mean, they touched the person with a portion of this uh, cow which was slaughtered, and then the the dead person spoke and said who it was that had killed him. So that is the story of the bakara. Which is being, ref- which is why the surah is known as Surah Al-Baqarah. This is no this particular point. The story we're dealing with here is the the chapter of the Ajil. The Ajil is a calf. A Baqara is a we would say the more the big one, the full adult size. Wallahu a'lam. Okay, so anyway, that was the the ayah. So now, we move on to the actual the, the tafsir of this ayah. So he says, "هذه صفة توبته تعالى على بني إسرائيل من عبادة العجل حين وقع في قلوبهم من شأن من شأن عبادتهم العجل ما وقع فتوبوا إلى باركم أي إلى خالقكم." He says that this is the description of Allah Taala's forgiveness for Bani Israel after them having worshipped the calf. When that love and for worshiping the calf had entered into their hearts, and all all that which had happened had happened, and then Allah Taala said, Musa, through Musa alayhi salam, "Fatubu ila bariikum." So repent to your Lord, bariikum. He said, "Ila khaliqikum," to your Creator. وفي قوله ها هنا إلى بارئكم تنبيه على عظم جرمهم أي فتوبوا إلى الذي خلقكم وقد عبدتم معه غيره. He says and when Allah Taala yes said فتوبوا إلى بارئكم through Musa عليه السلام that repent to your bari your creator. He says this is a like it is a point of note to For the the size of the crime which they had committed, أي فتوبوا إلى الذي خلقكم. 
repent to the one who had created you while you had worshipped someone else besides him. قال ابن جرير بسنده عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنه عنهما أمر قومه عن أمر ربه عز وجل أن يقتلوا أنفسهم قال وأخبر الذين عبدوا العجل فجلسوا وقام الذين لم يعكفوا على العجل فأخذوا الخناجر بأيديهم وأصابتهم ظلمة شديدة فجعل يقتل بعضهم بعضا فانجلت الظلمة عنهم وقد جلوا عن سبعين ألف قتيل كل من قتل منهم كانت له توبة وكل من بقي كانت له توبة Now he comes to the the method of how فقتلوا أنفسكم kill yourselves how this took place He says that Imam Ibn Jarir رحمه الله reports with his sanad from Hadar Abdullah Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما who said that أمر قومه عن أمر ربه that موسى عليه السلام instructed his people upon the command of Allah عز وجل that they are to kill themselves so he says وأخبر الذين عبدوا العجلة فجلسوا those who had worshipped the cow the calf they were commanded to sit down وقام الذين لم يعكفوا على العجل and those who had not worshipped the calf they were told to stand and to hold knives in their hands and then as an additional mercy upon them another favor Allah gave them is that when Allah sent down a darkness, some say it was a fog, some a mist and stuff, but uh, yeah, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said it was a darkness. So, فَجَعَلَ يَقْتُلُ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا So some of them killed others. So those who were standing, who were the believers, the people who never worshipped the, the calf, they had the knives in their hands, and the criminals who had worshipped the calf, they were, the calf, they were told to sit down. So the Muslims now, they had... You know, they had to just cut their way through all all these people who were sitting here. Because, and and the reason for it being an additional mercy is because this was... Okay, let me just read the story and I'll come to this point anyway. So he says, they started killing uh, these ones who were standing, killing those who were sitting. And then the the darkness was lifted. And then there were more than 70,000 dead laying there. And كل من قتل منهم كانت له توبة. Every one of them who were killed, Allah had forgiven him. And all those who were left alive, they also had توبة. So if there were more than this, then those who were also left alive after Allah had raised this darkness, they were forgiven despite the fact that they were not killed. But you know, you have to look at this point. Is that more than 70,000 Jews, after just having been saved, freed from Fir'aun, saved through the sea, given everything and then straight away you know it's not like you're saying one two three four five people uh went and did a, a crime of worshiping some creature besides allah this is more than seventy thousand. you know seventy thousand is dead and there were still others left alive who were not killed so you know it's like a massive bulk who went to go and worship the calf in in this manner over here so in any case there's various tafasir for this particular ayah on, on فَقْتُلُوا أَنفَسَكُمْ Just the one me- is mentioned uh, over here by Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that the innocent parties, they were told to hold the knives, the guilty ones were told to sit, and so Allah sent down this darkness, they killed everyone that was there, and whoever survived, survived and was forgiven, and those who were all killed, Allah forgave them in that manner as well. So that's the story in a abridged format. Moving on to the next point, he says, وقال السدي, Imam Al-Sudi, uh, uh, Sudi rahimahullah, he says, فقتلوا أنفسكم. He says, فجتلد الذين عبدوه والذين لم يعبدوه بالسيوف. فكان من قتل من الفريقين شهيدا حتى كثر القتل حتى كادوا أن يهلكوا. حتى قتل منهم سبعون ألفا وحتى دعا موسى وهارون رب ربنا أهل أهلكت بني أهلكت بني إسرائيل ربنا البقية البقية فأمرهم أي أي يلقوا السلاح وتاب عليهم فكان من قتل منهم من الفريقين شهيدا ومن بقي مكفرا عنه فذلك قوله فتاب عليكم إنه هو التواب الرحيم إمام السدي رحمه الله he gives a different interpretation or rather a different uh, how you say a different story to the events he says that when Allah Ta'ala says, فَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Kill yourselves. He says, those who had worshipped the calf and those who had not worshipped the calf, they were put on two opposing sides, each side having swords. فَكَانَ مَنْ قُتِلَ مِنَ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ شَهِيدًا So, 
they fought like like you can say an ar- one army against the next army so they fought each other and from both sides whoever was killed was killed as a shaheed and he says so much who were killed it was almost as though they were going to be wiped out he says it is حتى قتل منهم سبعون ألفا until 70,000 of them had been killed in this manner and until موسى and هارون عليهم السلام they had co-authored ربنا أهلكت بني إسرائيل oh, oh Allah, بني إسرائيل has been destroyed oh Allah, save the rest, save the rest so Allah Ta'ala then gave the command that they should throw down their swords and Allah Ta'ala forgave them so فَكَانَ مَنْ قُتِلَ مِنْهُمْ مِنَ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ شَهِيدًا from, So from those who were killed from both groups, they were both regarded as shaheed. And whoever remained alive, they were مُكَفَّرًا عَنْهُ They were forgiven. And Allah Ta'ala had accepted their repentance. And that is the tafsir of the ayah, فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ And Allah accepted your repentance. إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, He is the one who is most accepting of repentance and the most forgiving. So here you see two different interpretations to this particular story. Now, okay, the, moving on to the next story, we'll give a bit behind it. There is one more opinion which has been mentioned here. Fakatulu uh, anfusakum. It's been mentioned in one opinion that they were also told, kill your own selves. You know, like commit suicide. But that's not a very, I would say, the a chosen opinion or anything of that sort. That's why you see these two opinions here are the ones which were given. But the most authentic and the most chosen view is the one which is mentioned by Hadri Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that the innocent ones they were commanded to kill those who were the criminals. Anyhow, moving on, he says, وقال ابن إسحاق لما رجع موسى إلى قومه وأحرق العجل وذراه في اليم خرج إلى ربه بمن اختار من قومه فأخذتهم الصاعقة ثم بعثوا فسأل موسى ربه التوبة لبني إسرائيل من عبادة العجل فقال لا إلا أن يقتلوا أنفسهم ثم أنفسهم قال فبلغني أنهم قالوا لموسى نصبر لأمر الله فأمر موسى من لم يكن عبد العجل أن يقتل, أن يقتل من, من عبده فجعلوا يقتلونهم فهش موسى فبكى إليه النساء والصبيان يطلبون العفو عنهم فتاب الله عليهم وعفى عنهم Alright, so anyway, Imam Ibn Ishaq, he, say, he gives now a third version to the events. He says that, لما رجع موسى إلى قومه, that after Musa a.s. now came back from the mountain and uh, all that had happened had happened. And the calf was now taken by Musa a.s. burnt out, throw it's the ashes, as you would say, uh, that was left over, it was thrown out into the sea. Then Musa a.s. went out to his Lord with the, the chosen ones from his people. Then a sa'iqa, as you would say, is that uh, like a screech. It was, it's one of the ways that Allah had destroyed many of the people of the, of the, of the past. So, the okay, the sa'iqa, you, if you would say it's, I suppose you can say it is like uh, uh, Allah Ta'ala hit him dead with a like with a lightning bolt, dead everybody, all those that came with Musa alayhi salam, dead on the spot. And then, summa bu'ithu, this is also will come later on again in, in another ayah, but anyway, so Musa alayhi salam came out with these people now to. Like to repent for, to seek forgiveness for Bani Israel's actions. So, 
Allah Ta'ala, he'd all these Jews did one shot with a thunderbolt. And then Thumma Bu'asut and Allah brought him back to life again. But, فَسَأَلَ مُوسَى رَبَّهُ التَّوْبَةَ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Musa alayhi salam asked Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness for Bani Israel from worshipping the calf. فَقَالَ Then Allah Ta'ala had replied that لَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَقْتُلُوا أَنْفُسَهُمْ That Allah will not forgive them except if they kill themselves. قَالَ فَبَلَغَنِي أَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا لِمُوسَى So Imam Asuri rahimahullah Allah is now saying it has reached me in the reports, the narrations which I have heard is that Bani Israel now told Musa alayhi salam نَصْبِرُوا لِأَمْرِ اللَّهُ We will have sabr upon the command of Allah. Meaning we will kill ourselves like Allah uh, commands. فَأَمَرَ مُوسَى مَنْ لَمْ يَكُنَ عَبَدَ الْعِجْلَ أَيْ يَقْتُلَ مَنْ عَبَدَهُ So Musa alayhi salam commanded those the, who had not worshipped the calf to kill those who had worshipped it. فَجَعْلُوا يَقْتُلُونَهُمْ So the, these, the innocent ones, they started killing the, the as you would say, the, what you call us now, the, the criminals. So they started killing the the criminals, and then is this now for Hashem Musa. So Musa al Islam he became he became happy because now his people were you know Musa al Islam had still wanted his people as obviously any Nabi or even general people you want whether it's your family your your tribe your whatever it is your friends you want them to. Be successful. So this was a means that Allah was going to forgive them if they do this. So when they were carrying out the command of Allah, Musa alayhi salam became happy. But what happened is, فَبَكَى إِلَيْهِ النِّسَاءُ وَالصِّبْيَانِ يَطْلُبُونَ الْعَفْوَ عَنْهُمْ But then the women and the children, they started crying to Musa alayhi salam, seeking, asking for forgiveness for these people, because these were the men now who were being killed. فَتَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَعَفَى عَنْهُمْ So Allah ta'ala accepted their repentance and forgave them. Because it wasn't, as you would say, the children who were worshipping it. It was the big, it was the men, the adults who were gone out on the trooping of 70,000 of them to go and worship uh, a calf. So anyway, these women and their children were going to be left as widows and orphans. So for that reason, when they cried and stuff like this, then Musa alayhi salam petitioned to Allah and Allah then said, Okay, everyone who is left now, Allah ta'ala has forgiven them. وَأَمْرَ مُوسَىٰ أَن تُرْفَعَ عَنْهُمُ السُّيُوفِ And Musa alayhi salam now gave the command that lift the swords from them, meaning stop the killing now. That's now the version which is reported by Imam Ibn Ishaq. So you, you already have three different versions. He gives an additional version. He says, وَقَالَ عَبْدَ الرَّحْمَنُ بْنُ زَيْدِ لَمَّا رَجَعَ مُوسَىٰ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ وَكَانُوا السَّبَعِينَ رَجُلًا قَدْ يَعْتَزَلُوا مَعَ هَارُونَ الْعِجْلَ لَمْ يَعْبُدُوهُ he says, Imam Abd Rahman ibn Zayd, he reports that when Musa alayhi salam returned to his people, there were 70 men who had remained with Harun alayhi salam who had not worshipped the calf. So 70,000 and more had worshipped the calf and the measly 70 had remained behind as Muslims and not worshipped the calf. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَىٰ إِنْ طَلِقُوا إِلَىٰ مَوْعِدِ رَبِّكُمْ Musa, uh, uh, Musa alayhi salam now addressed these 70 people, the 70 Muslims amongst Bani Israel, and told them, In tariqu ila mawaidi rabbikum, come to the, to the, the appointment with your Lord. Faqalu ya Musa, ma min tawbatin. So they said, O oh Musa alayhi salam, is there repentance? You know, it's like, can there be repentance? So then Musa alayhi salam said, Qala bala. أُقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ الْآيَةِ So, uh, Musa alayhi salam replied, Yes, indeed, and he read the ayah, which is now, Kill yourself, that is better for you in the sight of your Creator, and then Allah Ta'ala forgave them, till the end of the ayah. So, فَاخْتَرَطُوا السُّيُوفَ وَالْخَنَاجِرَ وَالسَّكَاكِينَ قَالَ وَبَعَثَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضُبَابَةٌ فَجَعَلُوا يَتَلَامَسُونَ بِالْأَيْدِ وَيَقْتُلُ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا وَيُلْقَى الرَّجْلُ أَبَاهُ وَيَلْقَى الرَّجْلُ أَبَاهُ وَأَخَاهُ فَيَقْتُلُهُ وَلَا يَدْرِي Here he comes to the point which I wanted to mention earlier, the additional favor which Allah had given to them. He said, so they took up swords, knives, and like daggers, and Allah then sent down some covering. Now like I say, some say it was a fog, some say it was a mist, some say it was a, a darkness, as you saw earlier. So, yeah, a dababa means a, 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 a fog. So, فَجَعْلُوا يَتَلَامَسُونَ They started feeling with their hands because you, can't, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. So, all the 
innocent ones were behind or the criminals one the criminals were in front so they started feeling their way with their hand everywhere where they felt someone they would strike that person so they started killing in that manner everyone above him in front of him rather so a man would find his father and his brother and he would kill him while he is unaware of it this was the favor which Allah had given to them because this was their own family this was their own friends this was you know your father your brother your uncle your you it's all your your son, your cousin, your nephew, whatever. These were the people who now had to be killed. So as an additional favor from Allah to them, Allah sent down this darkness or this fog or mist, whatever it may have been, to cover the what was taking place so that you could carry out the command of Allah while not realizing who it is that you have killed. Because obviously if you had to look your father in the face, your son in the face, your brother in the face and kill him, it would have been something much more difficult. So as a favor to them, Allah still sent down this additional fog and covered it and so they killed them in this particular ma manner while being unaware who it is that they killed. So a man would think maybe I killed that other person over there and this one think I killed that one there not realizing perhaps it was his own father and own brother and whoever it was that he had killed. قال ويتنادون فيها رحم الله رحم الله عبدا صبر نفسه حتى يبلغ الله رضاه قال فقد لاهم شهداء وتيب على أحيائهم ثم قرأ فتاب عليكم إنه هو التواب الرحيم so ويتنادون فيها and they were call, they were making this a call or rather they were saying this like a slogan while doing this رحم الله عبدا صبر نفسه حتى يبلغ الله رضاه may Allah have mercy on that servant who restrains and holds himself and uh, keeps himself there uh, as sabr until the the rida the pleasure of Allah reaches him so which is the, the whole story in a nutshell that the these people they realize now we had done something wrong uh, from worshipping the calf. So when they had told Musa alayhi salam, Bal nasbiru li amri Allah, we will have sabr and we will carry out the command of Allah. So this is why they were saying, May Allah have mercy on that person who restrains himself and like listens to the command of Allah and to they have sabr to such an extent that Allah's mercy comes uh, and pleasure comes down on them. So he says, فَقَدْ لَهُمْ شُهَدَا So the, the one, those of them who were killed, they were all shuhada. وَتِيبَ عَلَىٰ أَحْيَائِهِمْ And the the rest who were alive they were all forgiven and then he re the, and then he says maqra'a he read the ayah fataba alaykum and Allah ta'ala forgave them innahu huwa at-tawwabur rahim indeed he is the most accepting of repentance and the most uh, forgiving so yeah you, four different events or rather four different versions of the event had been mentioned and like i said there was an additional fifth one but uh, that one is not quite so accepted but still you know you have to there's a lot of stories or rather there's a lot of points to ponder over and a lot of benefit and things just from this one story alone it's a story with a lot of varying emotions and stuff inside of it the extent of the evilness you know that the, the and the fickle nature that despite seeing every every good thing every miracle and everything which Allah had showed in front of your eyes now you know this was not something just out of the blue it was the miracles from the time of Musa alayhi salam against Fir'aun and how Musa alayhi salam beat all the sorcerers and everything like this and one thing after the other all the miracles took place at the hands of Musa alayhi salam till it was being saved from Fir'aun the entire Bani Israel you know probably 100,000 or more of them such a massive group leaving in the middle of the night Fir'aun them waking up the next morning giving chase to them and the people of Musa alayhi salam on foot and things like that you know the poor people running along and this massive powerful army is chasing after them the superpower of the world and here you are running and you see oh it's the sea in front of us and the army behind us where shall we go we are going to be destroyed and Musa alayhi salam said Inna ma'ya rabbi is, uh, that uh, he, he told Bani Israel that Allah is, is with me Allah is with us but uh, the word he used, he said, Allah is with me. And Allah will not, like, forsake us. So they come there and Allah Ta'ala command Musa alayhi salam to strike the sea. And he strike the sea and the sea split this massive sea, a mountain of water on each side. And this massive group of Bani Israel, men, women and children, 
and everything, their belongings and stuff, and they pass through. And Bani Israel, I mean, and Fir'aun, the people coming from the back, they see this, and you know, they, even they have to be astounded. But the arrogance of Fir'aun was such that it was like, hey, it's some more magic. Let's let's go as well. So they charged into the sea, the open road between the sea. And when the entire group of Bani, of Pharaoh's people, from Pharaoh himself right to the last one of his army, had entered into the seabed now, then Allah Ta'ala dropped the sea down on top of them and killed every single last one of them. So, you know, all of this having taken place and coming out now on the other side, starting a new life, a life of free people and everything like this here. And like I said, they just come over the road and they see the first people worshipping idols and already they are asking, make us some idols as well. Musa Ali some tell them that you are a bunch of stupid people. This is battle that these people are worshipping. Mo- anyway, moving on, 40, a measly 40 days pass, Musa Ali Islam goes off to meet Allah and Allah gives him now the, speaks to him and in the, his absence, Samiri comes along and he takes all these things and he fashions a calf and he puts this stuff inside it and the calf becomes soft. Now, you'll see in the various tafasir as we come along later on that some say that the the calf could actually make a sound and speak others say no it was the when the wind used to blow uh, blow then it used to enter in by the one uh by the front of the cow exit by the back and used to make like a or rather exit enter from the back and come out through the front so you would make like a not quite a whistling but it used to make a sound it was like the calf was alive others say no the calf actually could make a sound and the calf, the gold, which obviously, you know, is solid, but it became soft, like 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 our, our cow actually feels. So they started worshipping the cow and every, the scarf and everything of the sort here. And, you know, there's, there's so much, so many ayat, which Allah mentions in various parts of the Quran, how Musa alayhi salam, when Allah ta'ala tells him, now why have you... Uh, come so early so Musa alayhi salam said no I left my people behind there you know it's like they are on the right path and Allah said no I have tested them for and with a small test Samiri had led them astray and that's how they ended up worshipping the calf and Musa alayhi salam came ghadbana asifa he came extremely angry uh, down back from the mountain and he grabbed Mu- ha- his brother Harun alayhi salam by his beard and his hair and Harun alayhi salam now gives his part and he say don't, oh my brother, don't grab me by my hair and my beard. I didn't have anything to do with this. I tried to command them, but they refused to listen to me. And they almost killed me so much they wanted to worship the scarf. They said, no, we will wait. We will worship it until Musa a.s. comes back. And then he tells us whether it's right or wrong. So, you know, there's a lot, so many, many, many ayats throughout the Quran. is all interlinked into this whole incident which took place here and then eventually Musa alayhi salam coming back and everything and being the Nabi he cared about his people so he seeks forgiveness for them and Harun alayhi salam seeks forgiveness for them and they declare themselves free from the actions that these people their people had done and these the small group of 70 people who had not taken part in this worshipping of the calf Musa alayhi salam taking them you know it's like miracle upon miracle and story upon story upon story which is all interlinked in this one incident just over here which Allah lays the story out over various ayat throughout the Quran like I say this one with the 70 people going with Musa alayhi salam is mentioned in one point the point of crossing over the river and them asking for idols is mentioned in another ayah so this is just one aspect now of the story which Allah is focusing on here so like I say here you come and then the realization that yes we have done wrong and in order to obtain the forgiveness and the pleasure of Allah we will go through with whatever it is Allah has commanded and then they give themselves up like this here and this massive group of Bani Israel is now mowed down to this measly small amount that 70,000 is killed obviously the 70 who were pious and did not take part in it they are separate and then those Perhaps there were extra thousands in them who were not yet killed on that uh, on that field. Those two, Allah had forgiven all of them. And so it had gone that after the forgiveness of Allah upon them, then they were left now to start life afresh one more time. You know, the amount of times Allah had given them chance after chance and Allah gave them a test and they failed every single last test. You know, every time if you read any ayah of the Quran, always 
the, the smallest of tests and they would fail hopelessly every single time but really when when Allah Ta'ala says that Allah Ta'ala وفضل, uh, that Allah had given uh, favored them and given them the all the bounties and stuff over the entire world you know they you just have to read the ayat and you have to see the the patience with which Allah dealt with Bani Israel you know it's like they should have been destroyed already from the first time that's the extent of their evilness but time and again Allah gave them chance after chance after chance after chance and yet every time the inherent evil nature came out and they had to be punished each and every single time like this but in any case this is now the end of this one particular chapter and you know you know look at the the very the very next ayah we is we'll move on to ayah number 55 we'll stop on this point here tonight but if you look on the the very next ayah like i say every test and everything which Bani Israel uh, which was placed in front of Bani Israel they failed hopelessly the very next ayah uh, uh, allah ta'ala now speaks and it gives the story that when the when Bani Israel said oh Musa we won't believe in you until we see Allah right in front of our faces so you know it's a, has everything which has happened to you not been enough for you to believe in Allah but yet that that deep rooted kufr was so much that after everything which had taken place they still were like they were so inherently kafir that they could not accept the existence of Allah. But anyway, like I say, we'll come to ayah number 55 and 56 uh, next week, inshallah. We'll stop on this point over here. So if there's any questions you have with regards to anything, you can feel free to ask your questions now. Okay, question over here. Are we allowed to trust the, the Jews? When it comes to trusting Jews, whether it's a Jew, whether it's a Christian, whether it's any kafir, it may be, it depends now what you mean by trusting. Or rather, does it mean if he tells you he's 27 years old, can you trust him that he's 27 years old? Then yes, that is something normal. If it's a regular person and you know he's not a liar, no harm in that. When it comes to the issue of trusting them from a from the perspective of can we take what they say with regards to the history and stuff like that then we did pass by already the this point that when it comes to narrations which they report which conform to the sharia then we we have no harm in accepting that. When they report things which contradict the Sharia, we reject it outright. And when they report something which neither conflicts with the Sharia, but has not been mentioned explicitly in our kitabs, in that case, there is no harm in accepting it. So, if that's what you mean by trust, then yes, to that degree, you can trust them. But any kafir, there should there, there shouldn't be this part of wala wal bara, this disavowal and stuff from the kuffar, is that you don't take them as your booze and buddies where you now also entrust them with your secrets and all stuff like that so the are we allowed to trust them is a very open-ended question which needs more clarification as to which particular thing but like i say it depends on each individual thing so when it comes to religious things you don't take it okay what's it about going into business with them when it comes to going into business with a Jew, you know, you, you look even with, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa having done business with Jews, the Jews always proved treacherous even in their business. But in any case, if you go into a, into business with a Jew, it, then it's it's on your neck. If you want to, you, you can do So if you don't want to, it's also up to you. There's nothing to prohibit it, but you just have to uh, take care of your own self. Wallahu a'lam. Alright, then, seeing as there are no further questions, then we will stop on this point here, inshallah. And like I say, next week we can continue onwards from ayah number 55.
So until then we end for now and we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh